Lazarus and Folkman's research into stress was mainly based on the work with humans. They believe that we are more vulnerable to stress because of our environment and lifestyle, thus forming the basis of the transactional model of stress and coping, which looks at the interaction between a person and their environment. And thus, stress relates or is caused by an imbalance between the demands placed on us and our coping resources. So a key thing here is that this is a dynamic model because it looks at the way we interpret a stressful event rather than the actual environment itself. So according to the transactional model, when we encounter a stressor, we make a primary appraisal, which considers whether the person has a personal stake in their encounter with their environment, i.e. are our goals thwarted, and importantly, it evaluates the significance of the encounter with the environment. And one of three things are going to happen. We're either going to evaluate that the actual stressor has no significance, that it is benign positive, that is a desirable outcome, it's been achieved, or it's created harm or a threat or a challenge to us. So if we appraise the situation as being stressful, our response could be injury, illness, anger, disgust, disappointment. We might perceive it as a threat where we start to worry, develop anxiety, a fear response, or possibly a challenge, anticipation, excitement, etc. So if we determine that we have a stake in the encounter, we'll make a secondary appraisal of the situation in which we'll evaluate our coping options in order to best deal with the situation and change the undesirable conditions. That is, we'll look at the resources that we have in order to create a more positive environment, whether we look at internal options, such as our willpower, inner strength, or our external options, which relies on peers, professional help, etc. So once we've appraised the situation, then we look at coping. That is changing cognitive and behavioural efforts to manage the internal or external demands placed on us that are appraised as taxing or exceeding our resources to cope. So thus, we feel like we can control a situation and manage the source of the problem. Our strategies could be defining the problem, generating and evaluating alternative solutions, learning new skills to manage the stressor, or reappraising the situation by reducing our ego involvement, finding new standards of behaviour. Alternatively, we might use emotional-based coping, where we're trying to reduce our negative emotional state or appraisal of the demands placed on us. That is, we feel like we can't control a situation or manage the source of the problem, so we might avoid the situation, distance ourselves from our emotions, we might accept what's happened to us, seek emotional support, use selective attention, that is only dealing with certain limited aspects of the problem, we might resort to alcohol or drugs. Strengths of the model, it's a far more cognitive approach than sales, general adaptation syndrome or the fight flight response which looks at the physiological processes involved in responding to a stressor. It's a dynamic model, i.e. it acknowledges that we can change, reappraise a stressor and thus manage our coping options. It caters for individual differences. It acknowledges that you and I can appraise a stressor completely differently. And it identifies that we can come up with alternative methods for managing a psychological response to a stressor. Weaknesses, a lack of empirical evidence, given we're working with humans, degree of overlap between the primary and secondary appraisals, they're not mutually exclusive, and difficulty labelling factors that determine stress and the stress response.